thank you for joining with me today. Um, I've been a bit under the weather, so I haven't been able to take advantage of this beautiful snow we've had here in the Netherlands. We've had quite a lot of snowfall. Um, hopefully there'll still be some on the ground in these next few days. I'm feeling a bit better. Uh, but I'm driven to keep putting out videos, so we're milking some of that old Tesla footage and going behind the scenes from that magpie section with me. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right here. But I will play that small section for you now and then jump in with me back in Tessel. Enjoy. On a frosty cold morning in late January lays the frozen dead feathers of the pheasant killed on the night before. Stuck in time in the ice till the morning rays penetrate the valleys of the dunes below. Buzzards and other scavenging birds like the magpie attempted down to the frozen floor to pick at the scraps. Winter can be tough on the island and nothing is left to waste. Eating any little frozen flesh left at the base of the feather, taking whatever nutrients he can from the leftover spoils. While they share some similarities with their corvid family, magpies possesses an extremely long tail. In fact, a magpie's tail is often roughly the same length as its entire body. Why magpies have such long tails remains up for debate, but it may provide them with the ability to make swift turns in the air. This would allow the birds to evade larger predators and make up for their rather average flying abilities. The magpie is actually considered one of the most intelligent animals in the world and one of the few non-mammal species able to recognize itself in the mirror. As clever as the magpie is, still having difficulty with the frozen down feathers sticking to his eye. So good morning, uh, welcome to Texel or Texel as we would say in English. Uh, it's about uh, 8.30, sun's just risen. Uh, I'm in the sand dunes uh, just behind the sea. This is the Vada Sea, which is basically the North Sea. Uh, it's a group of islands. Uh, this is the biggest one in the north of the Netherlands. I'm here for three days. Um, I just got up early before my girlfriend to have a little wander in the dunes, see what we can see. And I've got some electric bikes so I can get a bit further out later on today. I just saw, as I was walking over, a lot of crows, a lot of magpies flying overhead. A little tit in a tree behind me there. Um, so yeah, I saw, saw a lot of crows, magpies on the top of these branches here. It's quite long shrub in the dunes, a lot of heath and stuff like that in there. Um, so I thought it was a bit strange. And then I saw a buzzard fly off. I think it was a buzzard. It was a bit too quick. And I've just stumbled across a fresh kill last night. And if you can see this, I'll get some shots with a macro lens. But it was all frozen in the ice, some of it. I believe, I think it's some kind of woodcock. I'm not too sure. Um, I'll have to look it up when I get back. Or if you know below, I'll fill you in when I when I check. But maybe I'll get some nice shots with a macro with this. But uh, yeah, so it looks like there's a fresh kill. Um, a bit further down, it sort of opens up into this uh, dried up floodplain, if you like. Uh, so I'm going to go down there with the camera, uh, the Sony a7S III and the 200-600 and to see if we can see it, see if we can see that buzzard. Unfortunately when a buzzard came I wasn't set up so I had to stop and someone calling a dog. I'm really keen. Um, so I'm going to stop jabbering because I've already talked too long and let's get straight into it and see if we can see something exciting today. Okay, I'm just sitting along the path where that uh, dead bird was. I'm guessing it was like late last night because it was frozen over a bit. There's a couple of magpies coming to pick at the scraps. That's how I spotted it in the first place was because of the magpies. So I'm just getting low to the ground and uh, trying to get some nice shots. There's not much there to be picked at, so they're really, you know, going for it. I'm going to go into manual. I'm in clear image zoom and obviously that tap focus doesn't work on here. And I'm not nailing this focus. 
There we go. It's going to turn my tension up in my video head because I had it when I when you got a bird flying. Obviously, you don't want it too tight because it's hard to pan fast. But then with something like this, you want it quite tight to get the resistance. We've got two magpies now. Hopefully, we'll have a nice little interaction together. The buzzard as well stopped at that bank. It's flying low around here. It's not warm enough, I don't think, until it takes off yet. Maybe still digesting. Let's see if I can get close to these magpies. I think they should be okay. Probably used to it. I'm going to stop recording and uh, see if we can get closer. Ground's not level here. It's really annoying me that the flip screen, you have to have it straight before you can use the EVF. Looks like we might get lucky with the weather today as well. Well, not cloudy, it's going to be a bit bright, maybe harsh light, but with wildlife it's never a bad thing to have too much light so many times you shoot in the dark it's magpies hiding behind a bloody long grass come on now Ted come on now obviously in this 120 frames per second mode in all eye you don't want to just record willy nilly you've got to really think about what you're going to record because I've only got one of those uh bloody expensive CF Express A cards and uh, yeah if I run out of memory I have to start culling in the back of the camera which I really don't like doing and obviously with wildlife you sit on an image quite a long time like a bird on a branch you don't know when it's going to take off you can tell by its sort of animal behaviour but you never really know so you're just rolling anyway because you don't want to miss the shot so it's a bit of a pain this flip screen yeah I love having a flip screen but it is a bit annoying especially you have to have it flat before you can then look through the EVF bit of a pain but the 4k 120 or 100 frames come in PAL zone it's crispy it really is crispy like you can't tell any difference between the 25 and the and the 100 frames I don't think it's that good and it edits a lot better. The uh, all the intro mode it does edit well um, compared to the um, or you know long GOP. And I've got lower to the ground to give me that you know parallax with its eyes and the fore in the foreground. So obviously, if you're coming up higher, the with a this isn't a fast prime, so you know it's uh, what we at six point three f stop. Even though it's telephoto, you will get that nice separation. But if you really want to, you know, uh, make it more, you want to get eye level so the, f the background is further away. So it blurs out the background a bit more, creating that nice effect. And also, you just interact with the eyes better if you're at eye level. Now, I was lazy at the beginning and just got the shot when I had the tripod up. But now, I thought, All right, I'll get down low, sit on the icy ground to get the shot and hopefully it makes a difference I don't know what the noise is like it's so hard to tell how noisy the image is you can probably see now but I'm going to try cranking it up the ISO so I'll see if I could jump over to that second high gain I see I've turned the monitor so I want the monitor there so when I'm sitting back I can see it but when I go down I want it to go now if I put the monitor flat I'll show you. I want the monitor tilted up a bit because when I'm sitting up, it's an easiest angle for me. When I go into the eye cup, the EVF, I can't see because the monitor's still at an angle. So I have to flip it flat, then I can look for the EVF. Hail for Feyland, they would say in Dutch.
so there was a wren right in front of me it was so close I, the focus distance was too close uh, but yeah beautiful it's that case of you think there's not much wildlife and then you sit and the animals sort of get comfortable with you and they start coming out and start showing and you hear the the tits calling in the trees the wrens rustling in the bushes the magpies calling you know the you know little birds flying over it all sort of comes alive you know as soon as you know i've just sat down for what 10 minutes i can tell it's been about 10 minutes because my ass cheeks have gone numb and fallen asleep so as beautiful as it was to see on the magpie let's see if we can get something big So I hope you enjoyed that small little section there. I'm sorry it wasn't that much, but like I said, I just want to keep putting out this content because I think it's the best way to learn is just to keep creating. Um, so hopefully you can get out and enjoy some of this snow these next few days. It's going to be very cold, so wrap up. And let's hope to see you all out there. Uh, but in the meantime, peace, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.